Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we're going to have a look at the latest on the heavy showers and thunderstorms we've seen over the course of this afternoon. Uh, we did have yellow warnings in force and they still are in force for a couple of hours so we'll have a look at that as well. We'll also look at the longer term forecast with things looking very unsettled for the next couple of weeks with northerly winds coming in uh, over the next couple of days. But it's looking encouraging for the middle of August where things could potentially turn warmer and drier. Very uncertain at this stage, but things are looking potentially encouraging um, for the middle third of August. So do remember, uh, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And do remember to follow me on Twitter as well. Links in the description. So over the course of this afternoon, we did see quite a few thunderstorms. And we're looking at the live radar at the moment. You can see those showers and thunderstorms are starting to fade away. We do have a yellow warning for thunderstorms up in the northeast and across the southeast as well. I do suspect they weren't that great, really, as we did see thunderstorms quite widely. Um, those areas didn't especially see um, more thunderstorm activity. Um, so a bit unsure um, whether the models were a little bit wrong, um, or at least the Met models at the Met Office based their warnings off um, were a little bit wrong in terms of that. As we did see widespread showers and thunderstorm activity. I did see in my video yesterday... Um, that many uh, there were going to be many showers and thunderstorms around so i don't know exactly why the thunderstorm warnings were uh, as localized as they were as the showers and thunderstorms were much more widespread but i did get a very good thunderstorm um early this afternoon i do have a time lapse up on my channel right now and i'll link it up in the top uh, top right corner so do check that out if you haven't seen it already i saw some very incredible sort of photogenic clouds within that we have a wall cloud starting to develop um as that thunderstorm crossed um across me and even at points there's a bit of rotation and there's potential i don't know if it's conf anyone can confirm it but it did start to look like we could, we were seeing a bit of a funnel cloud starting to develop within the thunderstorm so very interesting so make sure you do check that out um i'll link it up on the right here but over the course of the evening the showers will die out of course and then they will come up again tomorrow as those northerly winds start to take hold especially in the north if we have a look at the latest weather warnings, you can see how these thunderstorm warnings were quite confined, very much towards the coast. But we did see a wide smackering of storms um, further westwards. And if we do briefly go back to the um, uh, the live radar, and I do run it back a few hours, you can see how um, the showers were quite widespread. Um, as you can see, even further eastwards towards Oxfordshire, we did saw some saw some cells. So. Yeah, I'm unsure why the warning was exactly uh, along the coast, but uh, I mean, it, it it didn't make too much impact as the storms weren't very severe as such, and they did move through quite quickly. So, um, not many areas saw too many issues with them, and they weren't particularly um, violent. But for example, where I was, where I did see a thunderstorm, it was pretty pretty significant for the sort of 15, 20 minutes that it cro did cross over. But those warnings do expire at 9 p.m. tonight, so there's still a chance for not to sell developing. But looking but looking at that radar, it doesn't look particularly encouraging. But as you saw, damp oil could bring 20 millimetres of rain in an hour, and perhaps 30 to 40 millimetres. So not massive amounts, as we have seen some thunderstorm warnings recently, saying potentially 100 millimetres. Um, so it's not not as significant as we've had uh, thunderstorms recently. But again, very widespread showers and um, heavy thunderstorms within it. So it does look like tomorrow there will be more showers and potentially thunderstorms around. So just need to keep an eye on the radar, really, over the next few days if you are planning anything. So if we now do go through the longer term outlook and have a look at the GFS, you can see at the moment northerly winds are starting to take hold. And you can see it does start to bring more settled weather in compared to what we've had recently, at least with Storm Everts, um, which has now gone up into Scandinavia. We do pull in northerly winds. It does start to pull down some colder air. Um, that's, I wouldn't really call it cold air. I'd just say really cooler than average um, really, and it's just going to mean some areas are going to be a couple degrees um, below average. But generally, because it is pulling in um, some drier air and we're building in high pressure a little bit towards the south and the west, it's going to be many areas actually going to be a little bit drier. So it may actually feel warmer, even though the upper air temperatures are colder, because some areas will see more sunshine than they have recently, meaning the two meters temperatures do rise um, that a little bit higher. But eventually that northern wind does get cut off. The low um, low pressure does come back in off the Atlantic, 
um, and you see the high pressure gets nudged away. And this is where we saw yesterday the potential for another named storm. Now on this latest GFS, as we saw yesterday, the storm does start to sort of ramp down as it crosses the UK. So at this stage, I wouldn't say it's a guarantee to be named, um, as it is about five uh, five days away from it start impacting sort of West Island. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye on it over the next couple of days, see if it does get upgraded, whether well, we do need to see sort of cyclogenesis happening with it, um, as that could rapidly develop into an aimed storm. But at this stage, it does look like quite wet and windy through Thursday and Friday next week. And again, just really quite unsettled weather with westerly winds, so nothing too cool towards 240 hours. But beyond that, we do start to see high pressure starting to build up further southwards and further eastwards. Now, it is in the uncertain time frame, of course, so we have to take it with a pinch of salt, but it's looking encouraging for the middle third of August, with those westerly winds really only dominating further northwards. Further southwards, things are turning a bit drier with warmer upper air temperatures, so we could see temperatures get up into the mid to high 20s once again. Um, so, looking more encouraging for the middle, middle of August, but at this stage, I wouldn't really um, say it's guaranteed at all. If we now have a look at the ECMWF, um, we can see at the moment, um, if we run it through, we've got those northerly winds over the next couple of days. High pressure does start to build in a little bit, but then by Tuesday, we've got a low pressure coming in from the south. That is a small feature that we didn't really see on the GFS, or at least didn't, it didn't develop as much on the GFS. That could bring some very heavy rain towards the south, sort of a channel low sort of event, which, uh, as I said a couple of videos ago, um, we did see another channel low come through. Would be dumping a lot of rain, uh, uh, dumping a lot of rain, but in the winter would be dumping a lot of snow across southern England. So, for all those snow lovers out here, this is sort of a classic feature that you'd always be looking out for from, from December to February. This is always gives a decent chance for a good few inches of snow in the south. But at this stage, it probably just bringing a lot of cloud, a lot of miserable conditions to the south. It does look like it moves through quite quickly, and we'll just have to keep an eye on that because it's exact position. If it's a bit too far south, Many areas to the north will remain dry, but if it does move a bit further northwards, we could see quite a deluge. But beyond that, there's the potential of that named storm we were having a look at on the GFS. That does move through. Again, not quite too severe on the east MDF, and we, again, we'll just keep an eye on it. Beyond that, low pressure just hangs around, and by day 10, it still does look like low pressure dominated, with northern blocking over Svalbard. So it doesn't look, look like we're going to break out of that too quickly. But you can start to see a bit of a dip in the jet stream start to take off. You see this low developing down um, towards the Azores. Um, and that could start to symbolise the jet stream starting to wobble a little bit. We have to run it along another couple of days just to make sure of that. And this is where we could see a dip in the jet. And we start to see southerly winds come back. Um, and if we do have a look at it, we do have some quite hot air towards the south in Spain. Which we'll have to keep an eye on. If that low does develop and high does take control over Europe, then it could start to thing, send things warmer. But again, uncertain time frame. So again, we'll just have to keep an eye on how it does develop through the middle third of August. If we finally have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see over the next sort of week to 10 days, things are looking pretty chilly. Well below average, around two, three degrees below average quite widely. And a couple of days even getting down to maybe four or five degrees below average. Um, really all the way sort of till the 10th, 12th of August where things start to recover and by the end we're slightly above average with quite a few ensemble members getting above 10 degrees starting up towards 15 degrees at 850 HPA which start, could start to give temperatures around the mid to high 20s if we do start to see some sunshine. You can also see there's a very high precipitation signal over the next um, week uh, to 10 days. Beyond that it does start to, start to weaken. Now there are still of course some ensemble members going for wetter conditions but the amount of them has decreased, so definitely a um, proportion of them are going for high pressure now. So definitely does look like there is a relatively strong signal for high pressure, and we'll just have to see how it develops over the next few days and whether it does start to creep into the 7 to 10 day time frame, and then we can finally look at exactly how it could start to develop. But yeah, looking very uncertain over the next week to 10 days, a lot more rain to come for some areas. Again, will be very showery at points, so some air, so rainfall amounts will vary quite a lot between locations. But there still, of course, will be uh, frontal rain moving in. So all areas will see some rain over the next week to 10 days. If we do have a look at the two meter temperatures, you can see over the next week to 10 days, it does look like highs are going to be around 20, 21 degrees. And I know there are people watching this who 
enjoy 20, 21 degrees, and it does look like it's going to be fairly pleasant for you. Now, of course, there are going to be rain around, which is limiting these temperatures, but of course, there will be drier spells around, similar to today, where it's been not particularly warm. Um, there have been a lot of showers around, but of course, some areas missed out, so it probably was quite a pleasant day with 20, 21, 22 degrees with sunshine and clouds. But yeah, over the next week, 10 days, it's going to be colder than really um, than average around highs of 20 21 degrees where this time of year we'd be expecting mid to low 20s for highs um, if not getting a little bit higher than that towards the end of the run so of the last four to four or five days you can see average temperatures starting to creep towards 23 24 if not getting up towards 25 and the odd ensemble member getting up towards 29 or 30 degrees which is uh which will be part of those ensemble members going for hot and dry conditions towards the middle of third of august and again we'll just have to keep an eye on how that does develop it's not guaranteed at this stage but at least it's looking a little bit encouraging because the next sort of week to 10 days is going to be sort of classic autumnal weather with a lot of westerly winds and low pressure if we finally just have a look at the short range at the UK Met Office run, just looking at the precipitation over the next few days, just to make sure we don't not getting caught out by any potential features. Um, so if we do run it through, you can see those showers and thunderstorms fading this evening. And then once those northerly winds come in tomorrow, it's going to be many areas for Norfolk are actually going to be drier um, as um, that northerly wind, of course, is a bit uh, has got drier air with it coming in from the north. And there'll be less showers around. Further southwards, though, where we still have influence of some warmer upper air temperatures and more uh, instability there is the potential for more showers and thunderstorms to pop off in the south beyond that as we move through monday it does look like weather fronts are going to be moving in off the atlantic um sort of coming up against a bit of high pressure so decreasing as they do but again still a lot of showers around across the uk through tuesday again it does look like another day of sunshine and showers for many areas before more frontal rain comes in and you can see by thursday when the potential for that named storm does come through a massive weather front does sweep through the country bringing frontal rain to all areas so as you can see by the uh, latest UK Met Office run, it's going to be frequent showers pretty much every day. Some, uh, some mo Most regions are going to be seeing some showers. At the, mo at the moment, it does look like further northwards and eastwards actually looks favoured um, for drier conditions uh, initially, as most of the showers do look like they're going to be confined further southwards. Um, but again, uh, you can't rule out showers pretty much anywhere. It doesn't look like... We're going to be able to guarantee any completely dry days for the next for the next week or so. Um, so if you do have any events outside, make sure you do keep up to date with the forecast. Make sure you keep up to date with the Met Office warnings as they can um, be put in, in very short notice. Keep an eye on my videos, of course. I'll be updating this every day. Um, and keep an eye on the live radar um, if you are going out, as that is the best indication, really. Look at what the wind is coming from at the moment. It's... Well, it was well, northerly wind at the moment, um, but over the next week to 10 days, it will be predominantly a westerly wind. So if you like, look on the radar, look to your west, see if there are many showers around. And that is probably the best indication I can really give in this sort of short range if you're deciding to do something and if it's going to be raining that day. Um, so, yeah, just keep an eye out. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you check out my Thunderstorm tie lapse uh, that I looked earlier. And, uh, and I'll see you again for another video soon.